The next hour, President Biden will be signing the Chips and Science Act into law, aiming to boost semiconductor production to address the chip shortage and to strengthen U.S. manufacturing and competitiveness in the future. The White House is touting more than $44 billion in new investments by U.S. chip makers. One company that welcomes the Chips Act is California-based Indy Semiconductor, a maker of next-generation chips and software for the auto industry, including advanced driver assistance and autonomous driving systems. Its customer list is stuffed with famous names like General Motors, Ford and Stellantis. And joining us now is Donald McClymont. He's the CEO and co-founder of Indy Semiconductor. Donald, fantastic to have you on the show. Let's talk about this act. Clearly, you welcome um, any support for the industry, but what specifically does it mean for your business? What is, what is it going to allow you to do better? Uh, morning, Julia. Thanks for having me, first of all. Um, so the, the CHIPS Act itself is um, heavily focused, of course, on, on bringing manufacturing back to the United States. Um, that in itself, in our form, we are a so-called fabulous semiconductor company, which means that uh, we design and sell the chips and we use subcontract manufacture to, to manufacture them, typically uh, as has become kind of common now overseas. Uh, for us, initially having uh, direct access to uh, a manufacturing platform inside the United States uh, can only uh, increase the competitiveness of the, of the product that we have. And then additionally, inside the CHIPS Act, there are um, provisions which uh, allow direct uh, um, uh, awards for companies such as ourselves who are uh, designing and uh, building the technology which will, will ultimately be manufactured in, in, in likely U.S. manufacturing as, as a result of that. So, so for us, um, it allows us to, to continue uh, sharpening our game, make our competitiveness greater and continue to, to invest in the United States and have our design teams very close to our, to our customers, um, to which to a large part, are, in our case, are, are in the U.S. and uh, really uh, being driven by the U.S. car manufacturing industry. Okay, so there's a lot in there. There's the point that you made about outsourcing the manufacturing, which is crucial mm -hmm. to your business, and the, the design teams being as close to the clients, and, and predominantly your clients, and I mentioned a few of them, are in the United States. What are mm -hmm. they saying to you at this moment as well? Because we've gone through this period of various chip shortages. Are those clients pushing you as well to say, hey, we don't want you to have a supply chain that's outside the United States or elsewhere, or, or can't be guaranteed at times like we've been through in the last two years, are they sort of pushing you to do that too? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're, um, they've suffered very badly in the last year and a half, two years, and uh, having more visibility and transparency into the supply chain is extremely important for them. Uh, and really having it close at hand is, is one of the best ways of achieving that. So, so we are beginning to see uh, mandates for um, uh, the manufacturing of the chips that we, we provide for these guys uh, to be put inside the United States such that, so that they, they, they can fulfill that goal. Wow, so they're saying to you, look, we'll only give you this order for X amount of chips if the manufacturing is done in this country, which is, it goes to the point of, of needing an act like this. That's right. Um, I mean, so, I mean, we'd applaud the, the, um, the instigation of the act. Uh, I attended a meeting yesterday and, and one of the attendees actually pointed out that uh, the, the real terms uh, cash of the, of the act is equivalent to the amount of money in, in I guess, inflation, inflation adjusted that was required to put the man on the moon. I didn't check his math, but it sounds like a lot of money to me. And uh, for that to that <laughs> end, for our industry, it's a, a significant boost. Yeah, and this is a lot more people involved, let's be clear, beyond the technology of, of putting someone on the moon and the delight that, that ensued. Um, how <laughs> difficult is it to hire in terms of, of designers, particularly relative to let's say Europe, for example, that also managed to sign a CHIPS Act actually far quicker than the United States. What's the, the relative cost? Well, um, the U.S. Is, has always been a very buoyant market for, for our industry. Um, it's really the sort of center of, of the industry. It's where the critical mass of, of employees and talent is. Uh, many of the universities offer programs which um, provide direct uh, training in, in the areas that we need. Um, Europe, on the other hand, also managed to instigate their own CHIPS Act and th their cost basis is also very good in, in some countries which um, uh, offer also the ability for companies such as ourselves to hire um, can be maybe of the order of 60% of the cost of the US. So having uh, a boost for, um, uh, for, uh, from the government in order to, to offset that really allows us to continue to invest in the US and, and have our engineering teams as close to our customers as possible. Wow. So just to be clear, so, so my viewers understand, 60% of the cost 
of hiring in the United States is hiring in Europe. And I guess that's simply because demand is so high in the United States because you've got all the big tech companies that are sucking up these employees as well. I yeah, guess that's true. the direct question is, um, are you going to hire more people in the United States as a result of this act? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, assuming that we get approved, and, and uh, as, you know, as our as our business needs in any case, um, we'll continue to hire in the U.S. Um, we're very focused, as I said, on um, on the U.S. car industry uh, in addition to customers outside. But uh, to that end, um, we are committed to um, to growing our footprint as close as possible to our customers. And, and yes, we will do as a result of that. The Global Foundries CEO said mm -hmm. to us um, last year that when you talk about building out manufacturing cap capabilities and factories for an ordinary company, you can talk in millions. Yeah. When you're talking about um, fabs and the manufacture of facilities to, to create semiconductor chips, you need to talk in, in billions. So I look at the amount of money that was agreed here, and as good as it is, my question is, is it enough or do, is more required? Well, well um, I mean, building these fabs is, uh, is extremely expensive. Uh, there mm. is billions of dollars to, to create a single fab. Um, Global Foundries is actually one of the manufacturing partners that we use, and um, they are perhaps the most viable um, fab inside the United States right now. And you know, I'd expect that um, they, will, they will grow very substantially as, as a result of that. Um, so perhaps um, in order to continue the, the fund, we need to have enough money to put two men on the moon. <laughs> We're going to come back to that. Hopefully in a few years we'll talk about multiple people on the moon. Um, um, on a more serious note, I want to ask you um, how close you're watching Taiwan. Obviously there are humanitarian concerns with the, the escalated tensions that we're talking about. There's also business concerns with Taiwan manufacturing what more than half of the world's supply of, of semiconductor chips. What would it mean for the industry itself and for players like you, should that capacity be incapacitated for, for some reason? Well, I mean, first of all, um, I echo what you said. I mean, uh, you know, fundamentally, first and foremost, any uh, armed conflict should be avoided at, at all costs. And, and as the, the humanitarian concern is always, at least in my mind, the, the primary aspect of, of any of these kind of situations. But that being said, um, I mean, more than half of the world's uh, foundry market is, is based in Taiwan. Um, we use several subcontractors there ourselves. And if anything were to disrupt that, it, it would, of course, be catastrophic. So it's extremely important that uh, uh, the tensions in that region stay as, as calm as possible. Yeah, and de-escalated if at all possible at mm. this moment. Um, Donald, I would love to talk more about the business, but you are in closed period ahead of your earnings. So I wish you That's luck right. on that. And um, come back and talk to us soon, please, and we'll, then we'll dig around. That's right. You'll have numbers. to wait till Thursday. Yes, exactly. We, we shall. <laughs> Donald, great to chat to you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Bye. Likewise, the CEO and co-founder of Indie Semiconductor there.